Many of us are disappointed that Perugia is not playing in the World Cup, but he is still keeping his game sharp. Our game today comes from Title Tuesday, played this very same day, August 15th, and this is the last round of Title Tuesday, playing for first place. His opponent is Grandmaster Jose Alcantara from Mexico, uh, who has the white pieces. Ferruzja has black. Let's jump right in. Jose Alcantara begins with e4, c5, the Sicilian, knight f3, d6, and c3. This is a delayed form of the Alapin uh, opening, which we play c3 on move 2 in the main line, but here he delays it. Knight to f6, seemingly aiming at this e4 pawn. White plays h3, keeping the bishop from pinning because he wants this knight to support a d4 push. But what about this e4 pawn, some may ask? Well, you can't take it right now because if black takes, then queen to a4 check, hitting the king and the knight. And after blocking, white would just win that knight. Ferruzja plays e6, setting up the traditional Sicilian pawn center. Bishop to d3. What uh, Grandmaster Alcantara wants to do is play bishop to c2, keep that e4 pawn defended, and then get a full pawn center with d4, knight to c6, bishop c2, and e5. So there's a battle going on over this d4 square. Ferruzja has two pawns and a knight controlling it, uh, but white's going to be able to get d4 in if they want to pretty soon. Castles. Uh, bishop to e7. Now, my computer makes a crazy suggestion for black. It's never been played before. It's actually my computer's top choice, and that's the move g5. Now, this has been played in this type of position before, but never in this specific one, not in my database. Uh, really a very modern idea. If white were to take the pawn, then rook to g8, and you just get pressure down the half-open g file. Perugia, uh, Perugia plays the more normal bishop to e7. Now d4 from white. We know he's been aiming for that. Black does not want to exchange on d4. Uh, cd4, cd4, and very quickly, uh, Black would be left with two weak pawns on a7 and c6. So instead, Fruzja goes ahead and castles. Now dc5, dc5. Now we have our pawn structure in place. Now this particular pawn structure is called the focus formation. It's most common in King's Indians and uh, Rui Lopez's, but it can happen in Sicilians too, as we see here. Uh, the main issue is that Black has a little more space but white has this weak d5 square. They might be able to jump in. By the way, this was one of Bobby Fischer's favorite uh, structures for white. But black has his ideas too. So let's see how Ferruzja handles it. Bishop g5, bishop to e6, knight b to d2, and now knight to d7. First of all, he's offering an exchange of his bad bishop or white's good bishop. But then he has this long-term strategy. He wants to play c5, c4, and then take the knight on d7 and go into c5 and to, then to d3. Uh, it's an ambitious idea. Karpov pulled it off uh, before, uh, but White's aware of that. He wants to stop that. First of all, he plays the bishop back to e3. He doesn't want to make that trade. And after c4, beginning that process of moving the knight to c5 and to d3, he plays b4. And this is a strong move. Basically, the pawn controls the c5 square, so the knight can't get to d3. And if he were to take en passant, then uh, this is no longer a square supported by a pawn. So a very strong move from Jose Alcantara. B5, A4, A6, queen to E2, queen to C7. The pieces are getting out. Rook F, D1, rook F to D8. And we see black does have this space advantage on the queen side, but white does have this pawn lever that he can build up behind and create a weakness on B5 with knight to F1, aiming to, for G3, F5, knight to F8. Same idea for black. There's exchange of rooks. A, B, 5, A, A, B, 5. So white does have this weakness on B, 5, but he does have more space as well. So it's a, a bit of a trade-off. Queen goes to E, 1. Queen to B, 7. That puts some pressure on E, 4, but it also offers a potential exchange of rooks on the A file. Knight to G, 3. Knight to G, 6. Knight to F, 5. Hits the bishop at F, 8. That bishop just retreats. Uh, Ferruzja does not want to take the knight. Not only does he give up the bishop pair when he does that, but after, say, ef5, knight to f8, bishop to e4, white's bishops are quite strong uh, in this position. So he doesn't want to take that knight. The bishop goes back to f8. g3, taking away the f4 square from Ferruzja's knight at g6. f6, queen to e2. 
And now we see this knight has no more future on g6. There's nowhere for it to go. So he plays the knight to h8, looking to reroute it to f7 and maybe d6 and somewhere. Uh, white has the same problems. So he plays the knight to h2 with the idea of posting it aggressively at g4, trying to move into attacking position. Ferruja plays knight to f7, knight goes to g4. And now Ferruja offers the exchange of rooks. Um, he know, you know, White does have some pressure over here, so he wants to exchange pieces, but White declines the exchange, and that could be a mistake. He, he plays uh, the rook to d1, maybe just playing rook to a8 was best, uh, but rook to d1, this allows Alarez's rook to become quite active, and the first thing he does is play the rook to a2, pinning the bishop to the queen, and uh, Jose Alcantara's response is a very natural move but it turns out to be a blunder. He plays the move rook to d2. Um, and we'll see why this is a blunder in a second. The computers recommend bishop to c5 as the better move after bc5 pawn takes. Uh, white's doing okay. This pawn is not easy to capture for black. If you say he plays queen to a7, aiming at it, then white has this very interesting tactic. Knight takes f6 check, gf6, queen to g4, threatening mate on g7. If the, the king moves, it's actually a forced mate, just queen g7, king e8. Then queen to g8 is actually mate. Uh, these squares are covered by the rook. This square is covered by the knight. And if he blocks instead with g5, then h4. This is an important pattern to look at because it has relevance later in the game. Uh, but rook to d2 is a blunder. Now, can you see why? I find it a hard move to see the black's best move here but once you see it it's like i can't believe i missed it uh, black's best move is this rook to a3 very simple see the weakness attack the weakness and this c3 pawn really cannot be defended uh, there's just no way that white can maneuver his pieces in such a way to defend c3 and now ferruja has some real pressure so he plays knight to f6 check like the variation we just saw gf6 queen to g4 check the difference is Ferruzja's bishop is still on f8 in this variation. So the mate on g7 is covered. And so he's a little bit safer. And white has given up a whole piece for an attack, and he's got to make it count. The king just moves to h8. Queen to h4, aiming at the f6 pawn, threatening queen takes f6. Check. So knight to g5 blocks the queen's access to that pawn, bishop g5, pawn takes. So he gets another pawn, and he's threatening queen to f6 check again. So queen to f7 puts a stop to all of that. Now bishop to d1, threatening bishop to h5, bringing more pieces on, uh, in the, the attack. Queen to g6. So Ferruzja, having won a piece, wants to trade queens. Uh, white does not want to trade queens, but here Ferruzja makes a very strong move, h6. And the idea is he's basically just Make it, using the pawn as a platform for his queen to go to g5, forcing the exchange of queens, and that is what happens after bishop to g4. Queen to g5 does force the queens off. Queen g5, hg5, and now rook to c2. So he does, after all, defend the c3 pawn, but only after having given, given up a piece in order to do so. Ruger responds with bishop to f7. A powerful idea computers show us is actually a peace sacrifice, bishop b4, c4, knight b4, and uh, these pawns are worth more than the sacrificed piece here. Bishop to f7, knight to e3, knight to d4, a very powerful sacri sacrificial idea from Ferruzja. Uh, if white takes the knight, pawn takes, and these pawns, again, are worth more than the piece. These are incredibly strong pawns and would just roll uh, the white position. So instead, he plays the rook to c1, but then bishop to g6, aiming at the pawn at e4. And so white decides to go ahead and take that knight, e d4. And then what he does is he gives up his knight for the c4 pawn, pawn takes, or knight takes pawn, pawn takes knight, rook takes c4. So in this end game, uh, Ferruzja is up a piece, but white has gained three pawns in exchange, but Ferruzja's bishop pair are really strong here. Uh, d3, marching his pawn, rook to c8, pinning the bishop, just king g7, sidestepping, e5, but now bishop takes b4, and the three pawn advantage is down to two. Rook to c7, check, king f8, rook d7, placing his rook behind the passed pawn. 
but now d2, the pawn is defended by the bishop, king to h2, now rook to a1, setting up bishop e4, rook to h1 mate threats. After h4, that's exactly what Ferugia does, bishop to e4, threatening rook to h1 checkmate. So f3 to block that, but now he's able to promote to a queen, this f pawn blocking white's bishop's access to the queening square. So now he has to give up a whole rook for the queen. Rook d1, rook d1. Pawn takes bishop. He does get the bishop. Uh, rook to d2 check. King up. Pawn takes. King takes. Okay, so uh, Ferruzja has a rook in exchange for three sickly pawns. Now, at this point, both players were under 10 seconds. So as on title Tuesday, it's three minutes with a one second increment. Uh, so we'll go over these moves very quickly. And it, but it is interesting to watch how Ferruzja wins in an endgame like this. This process is quite uh, impressive. Bishop to c3 aims for e5. So now there are only two pawns for the rook. Bishop to f5. Now bishop to g3. Only one pawn left. And if there weren't very short time in the game, white certainly would have resigned here. King f6. So be to begin with, what Ferruzia wants to do is restrict white's king to the smallest box possible. Restricted squares. So the first thing he does is cut off the f file. Now this king only has access to the g and h file. So king up. So he's shrinking the box that the king is in. Now he moves his own king up. And we can see he's restricted the box for the white king to six squares, all the while keeping this pawn on e4 completely blockaded. King to h3, king f6. Square shrinks, rook f2 check, forcing king to h1, and then king to g3, and the game is over soon. After bishop to b5, you can see the final move, rook to h2 mate. And with this win, Ferugia finishes in first on Title Tuesday, August 15th. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon.